Please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. High point of the day as we speak. So that's really been the template. You cannot short this market. If you sit on your shots for too long, you'll get uh, cut out. And that seems to be what's happened today. You have stocks like l &T that have moved to the high point of the day. The metal index, that's Vedanta and Hindalco. Both of them were under some pressure. Both of them have recovered from the low point of the day. So intraday chart should come up for you. And even if you look at the broader markets, well, the mid-cap index was down close to a percent at one point of time. We have Syndicate Bank that spiked up. NCC, I remember the stock was under pressure. It had moved around 122 odd. That one as well has recovered from the low point of the day. And just style, what's going on there? The stock has given a big, big run. And this year itself, I think it's up close to 20%. And it's still in the red, but it's recovered considerably from the low point of the day. Ashwini Gujral as well as Sandeep Pagli, both of them are with us. Ashwini, well, you got the timing perfect in the morning. You said to buy that dip that we got. Now, if you're holding on the long position, is it going to be that sort of a day when we can end at the high point of the day? Um, what would the trade be on the Nifty? See, I've stopped getting overexcited in our type of market <laughs> because uh, the problem is that as long as the short covering lasts, the rallies tend to last. I think uh, Bank Nifty is likely to do that, possibly because uh, there are still, uh, you know, short positions which could be there. But it's a choppy market, so, you know, uh, each time you get a rally, you sell, you make money. Each time you get some sort of panic decline, you buy and you make money. I don't think you can really, you know, extrapolate that if today is up, tomorrow will be up another 200, day after another 200. It's not that kind of market. So very intraday type on the index. But uh, on individual stocks, uh, JPOC, it's a buy with a stop of 20, target of 27. Vedanta is a buy with a stop of 326, target of 344. And uh, United Breweries is a buy with a stop of 1095, target of 1150. Okay. Uh, Sandeep Vagle is also with us. Sandeep, good afternoon to you. What are your trading ideas? Good afternoon, Samira. I would go with a buy in a GMR infra, stop loss of 23, target of 27. And a buy in Adani Ports, stop loss of 426, target 443. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks so much, Ashwini, as well as uh, Sandeep uh, for joining us and uh, running us through all your picks. Well, we're moving higher. We're really moving higher as we speak. Uh, ICICI Bank, I think that as well is uh, gaining a tad bit. And HCL Tech as well couple of those stocks are moving well. So good to see. JP Associates, let's get the intraday chart just once more up uh, for you. The stock was up close to 2% when we started off the show. Now it's up close to 5%. So that's trending and it's trending with some strength. I think BHEL had, as well had one in order of roughly around 2,800 crores. That stock as well is moving higher as we speak in uh, the last couple of, uh, you know, uh, last couple of minutes. Well, from New Rise, we're getting some uh, reports. And in fact, expect to book up to 30% loss on Bushan Power and Steel NPA. Remember, there are two. One is Bushan Power, and, and when, which is the unlisted entity, and there is Bushan Steel as well. So we'll need to find out which entity they're actually talking about. You know, there's Bushan Power and Steel. There were two brothers. One got control of Bushan Steel, that is a listed entity. The second one is Bushan Power and Steel. So just uh, keep that in mind as well. We'll have to just look at it a little more closely. And then, in fact, we can, uh, you know, uh, uh, make sense of uh, that particular statement. But for the time being, they're saying the 30% loss on the NPA of uh, Bush and Power and Steel. So just keep that in mind. The market has taken off. So it's about a half percent in terms of gain now for the frontline indices. The Sensex has added about 180 points. The Nifty is uh, closer to the 10,750-odd mark. Even the mid-cap index now up four-tenths of a percent. In fact, the Sensex, uh, uh, the ticker is telling us, is now at a record high and inching closer to that uh, 35,000 mark. But uh, we'll talk about the markets a bit more in detail. As we count down now to the budget on the 1st, Ashok Wadhva of Ambit Capital says he will not be surprised to see a slew of populist measures, though he does not foresee a compromise of fiscal discipline. Here's more from his chat with Nisha Pudar. It's fair to expect that uh, the government will be very cognizant of state and central elections while framing this budget. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it will not be unfair uh, if the government does try and bring in some populist measures um, in the budget. 
Having said all that, I continue to believe that this government and our Prime Minister is so focused on our fiscal discipline mm. that I don't really see. Mm. I know there's a talk about is it fair if the finance minister compromises the fiscal discipline by a bit. Yes. I think it's fair, but I don't think that they will do it because they're so focused and having got the rating up now, they want to make sure that every other agency follows suit. Growth versus uh, fiscal prudence has been an ongoing debate. Do you think that, uh, you know, enough number of papers would come in the market by way of disinvestment? Air India talk has already begun and that could be the big theme on the deal street which will also help, you know, fill the gap of fiscal deficit for the government. The government will certainly explore other opportunities. We do know that the government is already kind of egging and pushing mm. public sector banks to go out and raise more capital. Mm. So all in all, I do see uh, more government paper coming to the market between now and March. And, and as I said, depending on what the tax collections look like, mm. the push could be even more aggressive. But Ashok, uh, we all know that it all depends on how buoyant the equity markets are. Today, we cannot be bothered at all. But there are several issues that can really break the kind of momentum that we are seeing. How are you seeing the equity markets ahead and around the budget this time around? You know, I actually don't see anything in the foreseeable future uh, which gives me any impression that the markets are going to backtrack mm. in any significant form at this point of time. Mm. Uh, liquidity continues to be a strong driver. Mm. I'd like to believe that as, as corporates announce the, the, the third quarter earnings, mm. you will probably see an uptake which will provide additional sentiment. Mm. I'd also like to believe that for the first time when I started hearing more and more about private sector seriously engaging and planning CapEx, now, if the third quarter earnings are good, as is expected, if mm. this capex from the private sector starts becoming a reality, mm. I would think that will provide even greater mm. positive sentiment to the market, which is already, as I said, being driven by liquidity at this point of time. So I don't see anything in the foreseeable future mm. which gives me an impression that the market is going to backtrack in any significant form. What do you think about the long-term capital gains uh, tax? Is that going to really spook the market? You know, it's been a subject matter of discussion uh, ever since Mr. Jaitley became the finance minister. Will he withdraw capital gains tax or will he dilute the concession in mm. some form and shape? Mm. My own sense is it's unlikely to happen. Mm. Uh, government recognizes the value of a bullish, buoyant capital market. Mm. Government recognizes that ability to raise capital, particularly where private sector capex has to go up significantly, mm. uh, is a critical factor. Government realizes that banks have, public sector banks have to go out and raise serious capital mm. uh, now and for the foreseeable future. All right, then, Nifty is at the high point of the day. We've conquered that 10,750-odd uh, mark. The Sensex has made yet another record high. Maybe, in fact, 35,000 could be on the cards as we speak. Uh, we're moving with strength, and we're moving very, very well. Infosys, that one continues to move higher, holding above that 1,150. One would have thought the buyback price was very high. Guess what? We're trading above that level. Remember, the IT index, if you pull up a one-year chart, you'll see that the IT index... Keep in mind, it has given you 30% returns, you know, from the lows that we saw on February 1st. So that as well should be kept in mind. You pull up a wider time horizon, you'll see that, in fact, that's a 12-month horizon from the lows of February. It's given you roughly around 30%. So things looking good, actually. Let's see whether or not we can hold on to these gains or even build on these gains. IT index is firing. The Nifty Bank has hit a century. So it's, um, it's looking good. It's uh, looking good. The advanced decline ratio as well is narrowing down. When we started off trade, there were less than 500 stocks that were advancing. That number has moved closer towards 900. So maybe, in fact, at some point in time, they'll kiss each other and maybe they'll cross each other as well. Let's see. Last uh, you know, couple of hours of trade have been good for the bulls. Let's see whether or not they can hold on to this. And we're still holding on to those gains. Uh, the Sensex is at a record high, 35,000. We're eyeing that mark. Let's see whether or not we get to that particular mark. But just pull up the Nifty futures. You know, I made this point yesterday as well. The total open interest on the Nifty futures for the current contract is at around 3.1 crore. Normally, you have that number at around 2.2, 2.3, 2.4 .2 as well. So it's a it's a fully loaded Nifty future that we're looking at. There'll be a lot of shots as well in there. So maybe even if incremental buying doesn't come, if those shots covering out, then in fact, we can move to around 10,800, 10,900 as well. So keep an eye out on the total open interest, 3.1 crores. That's the number that I'm looking at. And if we're looking at options, 10,700 put. Yet again, it's very, very active. Close to around 20 lakh shares have been added over there. So just keep an eye out on that front as well. It seems that the bulls don't want to give up that 10,700 level. And that's why that is so, so active 
in trade today. But um, as promised, it's an earnings heavy day and we have a lot of companies that will be coming out with their setup numbers, a lot of frontliners as well. Our team comes up for you on the screen. Ronit's got a busy day, Manglam as well. I think in the next couple of hours, uh, we'll be having HUL and Z. Uh, well, that should be first up, I think, among all three of them. So, ladies first, what's your gentlemen? Let's go across to uh, Sonal. Sonal, tell us, what do you expect from Z? Uh, well, we're expecting quite decent earnings from Z Entertainment this time around because we had, remember, we had the sports business in the base. So, considering that, uh, that the headline number looks like that, the revenue is expected to go up around 7%. The EBITDA is expected to go up around 8%. The margins are going to expand around 50 basis points, but the real growth will be seen in the profits, which are expected to go up around 50%. But the key number still remains the ad revenue and the subscription revenue growth. Now, as per industry estimates, ad revenue has grown by around 13 to 14 percent in last one year. But on reported basis, considering that we have sports uh, business in the base, we are expecting an ad revenue growth by of 16 to 17 percent, but subscription revenue is expected to decline by 12 percent. The other thing to notice is on like-to-like -like basis also, we'll have to see the numbers. So the ad revenue growth is expected around 17 percent, and the subscription revenue growth overall is expected around 10 percent. Now, where is the big profit number coming from? That is from the other sales, from the new release that we have seen uh, that is Karib Karib single and secret superstar so that is what uh, that is what we'll see in the other sales going forth and uh, we also expect some increase in the operating cost due to these new releases and also because the company has spent a lot on marketing spends because of Z Cine awards so these are certain numbers that we look out for also last time management had told us that they'll see 30 percent plus margin going forth so we'll have to see how it pans out in numbers today all right, so Z Entertainment expected any time now. In fact, should have been out by now. But let's focus on HUL then, the big one. Mangalam, expect a good quarter? Expect a superb quarter, uh, Sumera. That's exactly what the street is going with. And Sonal just told you about uh, the ad revenues increasing for Z. Where do they come from? Well, HUL, all the FMCG guys, they have ramped up their ad spends. Why? Because it's all about the base. Last quarter, they had the GST uh, 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 restocking sort of uh, thing coming in quarter on quarter. Year on year, you have the demonetization. So taking all these things into consideration, it's a good quarter which is expected. The revenue growth of 10% is what we're working with. Remember, the relative number 10% is more important than the absolute number. EBITDA, that one's likely to grow by 24%. 1,684 crores is the number that we're working with. Uh, margin expansion of close to 200 basis points. That will come about as the company is uh, sa saving their costs. Uh, the international parent has a strong focus on cost reduction, some increased premium products, as well as some sort of savings coming in from the GST reduction as well. Watch out for the net profit. We're working with a number of 1,156 crores. Optically, this looks like an 11% growth, but adjust for the exceptional in the base, and this number should go up by around 25%. So 1,156 crores on the bottom line, 200 basis points improvement on the margins. The most important number that we watch for Hindustan Unilever is the volume growth. The street is working with a number of 8 to 9%. A few aggressive brokerages believe that the company can go ahead and do a double-digit volume growth because the base quarter, there was a 4% decline. If that happens, then it's the first time that the company posts a double-digit volume growth since the fourth quarter of F5-12. So let's watch out as far as HUL is concerned. Management commentary will be important. Rural uh, growth going forward. The input prices, crude prices are at 70. Let's see what happens. Okay, all right. It's all about the base there. So we'll keep an eye out on uh, that one. But uh, Ronit, uh, the base is not making a big impact here, is it? Uh, I think the operating profit is expected to come in a tad bit lower. Yeah, Nigel, no, we're not expecting much. Actually, not expecting any surprises from Bharti. In fact, the stock is down close to 12% in the last six months. So I'm going to start with the numbers. We expect the revenue to be flat or up around 1%, 3,600 crores, as well as the EBITDA. We're expecting a slight decline there, around 3%, largely due, due to a decline in their energy business. Moving on to the margins, margins also a slight decline of 170 basis points, and the PAT a slight uptake of 9%. So one of the key things to watch will be the tenancy additions. You know, they're, they're actually affected negatively by all this consolidation in the telecom sector as the number of players reduce the number of players you know that buy the network or buy the telecom towers will also reduce so if you see the tenancy additions we're expecting a net deletion of 710 remember in the last quarter there was an addition of 1600 so in the back of this we have to see the net tenancy additions back to you all right guys thanks very much for joining in and taking us through the expectations from the big earnings today we'll take a quick break come back next and we'll track the commodity space for you well the equity market going great guns so let's see what's happening in the commodity universe manisha gupta is here with a quick roundup manisha 
Thank you so much for that. Well, we were talking about the sugar prices in the break and uh, the latest data that has come in does show that the sugar crushing has been on the higher side. Remember, uh, the markets are looking at uh, a higher production this time around after a seven-year low sugar output that we saw in the previous year. And that is the reason you have seen the sugar prices continue to see a decline. On your screens, there you can see that the futures trading nearly six-tenths percent down uh, on the lower side. But the spot prices in Maharashtra are now trading below 3,000 rupees and that's just about the cost of production. The last couple of years were good for the sugar as an industry where you saw the sugar prices continue to gain up and the government in some sense was trying to hold the sugar at a resistance of 40 rupees per kg for the retail markets but that clearly is history and we have seen a very sharp decline continuing for the sugar prices. Since the month of October you have seen sugar prices come down by nearly 17 percent and that hasn't stopped as a day-to-day -day basis we see further decline coming in for the prices there. Dharmesh Bhatia now joins us to talk more about that and other commodities. Dharmesh, hi. First of all, what's your sense now coming in for the sugar prices? Because we are looking at an Indian surplus and definitely a global surplus for this year. Uh, so regarding sugar, I'm still expecting the market to be consolidated. I'm still not okay. so much keen on buying at this level also. Mm. Internationally, still the market is at oversold position. But the, the problem is that fundamentally the availability is such a high production that market is showing a weak zone. If you track uh, Bloomberg uh, Agriculture Index, it's trading at almost a decade low, almost one and a half decade low. So it's trading at around like 94, 95 level, which is really, really bottom price, which includes sugar, wheat, corn, soybean, everything. So the, the ID market is showing a weak zone, and I'm expecting the trend to be continued, even though the crude oil price has skyrocketed, but still the sugar has not shown that kind of a rally. I don't think, though, that market will show a rally, continue. Any speculative rise is a good level to accumulate short. All right, not buying yet, even as the sugar prices have continued to decline. But, uh, Darmesh, you talked about the crude oil prices also, and while we seem to be taking some breather there, it's off its three-year highs, it's down one and a half dollars from the kind of highs that we saw in the markets yesterday as well. Of course, uh, we are waiting for the U.S. weekly inventory numbers where we have seen a draw for last eight weeks. What is your sense on prices for a slightly longer term, and what are you expecting from the inventory data today? Uh, for inventory, I'm still expecting that uh, this will come down so you can see some kind of a, a cushion for the price because the market has shown some kind of cooling at higher level, around 70 level brand. Uh, the trend is still not changed. The market is still firm and I'm expecting the oil rig to continue to decline. Uh, the main change around turnaround will be only in the March where OPEC will again set for the ch changes in the, in the production cut. So you can see the trend to be continued. I'm not uh, expecting the market to show some kind of weakness at current level. Any decline is a good level to accumulate. The trend is still firm and I'm expecting market to go a rally around 3 to $4 from current level also. Okay. All right. Thanks so much, uh, Dharmesh, as well as Manisha, for joining in and uh, giving us uh, all those cues. Well, keep an eye out on the mid-cap space. We're still trading in the green. We've recovered considerably from the lows. But a couple of stocks, RELCAP, for example, just pull up the intraday chart. That stock's uh, slipped a tad bit. And Bharat Financial Inclusion as well. That one as well should be up for you on the screen, so keep an eye out on that one. In terms of NMDC, keep an eye out on this stock. You know why? Because the stock has had a good run. But uh, what's happening is there is talk that maybe, in fact, some of these domestic uh, miners, they can produce some more iron ore. If that happens, then we'll have more supply hitting the market. So there's just one point you should keep in mind. It could take some time for them to start uh, production as well. But that's just a factor that could be working on the mines and some routine profit booking with a superb run we have seen on NMDC. But on that note, we'll wrap up on Halftime Report. Business Lunch takes all the action forward.